Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. And if you're watching this video, you know what it is. We finally found one, guys. We found a second gen Peg Perigo Super Gaucho. It's crazy that all these years I've never found one. And then the week that I make a video about a Gen 1 Super Gaucho and commenting that I've never had one or even seen one, Bam! It shows up. Facebook Marketplace, an hour drive from here. How much do you think I paid for this, guys? Super Gaucho, Gen 2, with one pretty good battery, and then one battery that's completely junk, but it has the handle and it has the wiring harness. So instead of spending the $120 to $150 on a new battery, I'm gonna explain that you guys can go on Amazon for 50 bucks and get two Mighty Max 12 volt, 12 amp hour batteries, throw it in and have years of success as long as you charge it correctly. As you can see here, a little sidetrack, but I'm charging it with an RC battery and here I'm just monitoring the volts. So I pop the top um, because the stock charger wasn't charging it it was saying that it was charged so um, I got out this bad boy and we're charging it up and I'll um, get back to this once I put the battery back in it and do some um, some electronic stuff but let's get to it guys okay gen 1 with a custom roll cage so you got to disregard that the physical size of them is exactly the same. They basically have the same parts that can be switched back and forth as far as everything cosmetic. Now, the biggest number one thing that you're going to see cosmetically is the wheels, guys. So these are actually, it's a rubber coat. So look at it. It's, it's a rubber sleeve over a plastic tire and I'm going to take it off and I'm going to show you the differences and it's actually one inch bigger in circumference than these foam it, it's really hard to tell but this is like a you can see like the little beads so I commented that these really get damaged pretty easily and rocks get stuck in them here I did see a couple areas maybe it was the back one that um, there are some, you know, some minor little gouges in it and stuff. But the biggest thing that surprised me is, is how this is loose. And I have concerns because when this has traction and you give it gas, you can physically, I don't know if I can do, that or do it or not, because there's not, not enough leverage for me. But I could physically spin the, the wheel and it would it would slip and the owner that we bought it from said the same thing if you had high traction the actual inside of that wheel would spin which kind of sucks and also picture all the sand and water and everything that can get in there personally i think it'd be pretty cool to have some bead locks huh i don't know at minimum i'd like to have that like weather weatherproof adhesive or something to keep it sealed from the elements so that's the biggest one um, the second biggest one is yes it does have the smaller gearboxes I'm gonna go over here ah so this is the new setup so this is the same motor and gearbox that's in the 24 volt razor and yes that is what's in the new one. I haven't totally tore it apart, but I did um, pop the shocks and look in there and you can see that they are different. They aren't the massive gearboxes. Where are those guys? Come over here real quick. But yeah, this is the old school setup. I talked about it in the last video, but if you didn't see it, um, there's the difference. Scooter motor, just a regular brush motor. They also went to a smaller, um, I think this is a little bit bigger than the 716s, like the Power Wheels brand, 
But the old uh, original Super Gaucho has a giant three quarter inch tube axle. And this is just a solid one. Um, it's a little bit nicer because it's actually got um, threaded lock nuts on the ends. And this one had just holes in the cotter pin. So there's a little bit of slop in it. Um, but yeah, so the next one is the wiring. This is a dummied down electrical system. So there is no lights anywhere. None of these lights front or back have lights in them anymore. The Gen 1, it had headlights um, and it had tail lights. And they got rid of the, look this out here. This is missing the cover, but it's also missing the built-in charge port. Uh, the Gen 1 had this charger with a barrel connector and you would plug it in here and that's how you could charge it. Now you gotta do it the old school way. Open up the hood, flip up the fake motor, and um, unplug it and plug in the stock type charger. So they got rid of that, but it does still have the three speed setting. So like on a Power Wheels brand, you have like a high speed lockout in the shifter. Well, this one, it's it's got high, low, and reverse, but this right here can limit the kid's top speed. So three is the fastest. And underneath the seat here, I already popped off. These are exactly the same. It's got an adjustable seat. But in here, of course, I don't have a screwdriver. Handy. Hold on. So under the seats, you have the control board. Pop that. This is the mystery um, circuit board that I thought that I had somewhere and I could not find it anywhere. But these are basically super rare, unobtainium, and they're known to go out. Um, picture if this ever gets water in here, it's just gonna fry this guy. So it still has, you know, quite a bit of stuff, but it doesn't have all the fancy things that the old school one used to have. So, moving on. So it does still have all of the mechanical brakes. Uh, like I mentioned in the other video, when you hit the brake pedal, it has disc brakes that lock up. This one, the disc brakes must be really worn out because when you hit the brakes, uh, it doesn't lock up. And it actually has miniature disc brake pads. So I think once I take this apart, I'm gonna try to put like a little screw or some kind of spacer in there to push that brake pad further out. So crossing fingers that we can get some mechanical brakes. Okay, so it still has the same mechanical brakes, but another thing they changed is the shocks. So this is Gen 1 sh uh, shock. Basically, it's an aluminum sh or steel shaft with a spring in there, and it get an inch and a half of travel. Well, now they put in the new style of um, razor shock where there is no travel. Basically, it's a fake looking shock. And you can see I put this silver on here because I have... Um, cut that out and put a real spring on there in the past to actually make that work. Um, but it's like a pogo stick. Ideally, you guys want to replace the shocks with these. Adjustable compression and rebound. Huh? That's That'd be a cool mod. You guys want to see a video on that? Adding some legit shocks. So shocks, they come out real easy. There's just two plastic pins that pop in there. And this is how you get into the carcass of the motors. So you can see those are regular 775 motors, 13 tooth pinions. Uh, I think they're like 14,000 RPM, something like that, and just regular gearboxes. But you can also see the mechanical brake there. So when you hit the brake pedal, it turns that cam mechanism and really um, puts the brakes on. It also opens up the brake relay so that you can't accelerate. It locks out the gas pedal. Okay, so one more cosmetic thing is when you pop the hood, it's just got their standard 
lame, not lame, but less detailed and no uh, electric motor uh, engine. Uh, let me show you. So all this is still the same underneath. But the Jet 1, remember from the last video, it's got this super fancy motor that when you turn it on, you can see the um, rocker arms and the camshaft spins and, and all that fancy stuff. So they basically still charge the same amount of money, but they took away a lot of the features. So now I gotta take the wheel off. I'm gonna show you guys the one thing that is way better on this thing, a, a big time improvement. So let's take this wheel off and show you guys the upgrade. So here's the wheel I'm talking about how basically if it's got traction, you see the tread, but the rim still turns. It's almost like it's got roller bearings. Um, yeah, it just kind of shocked me. That needs definitely needs an upgrade. Okay, make sure it's still in frame here. So here's the hub driver. So this is what goes, connects the wheel. And then it's got the disc brake. And that only goes on a certain way. So then you pull this guy out. And that's what connects into the gearbox. But check this out, guys. It's got roller needle bearings. Amazing. And I took apart the old Gen 1 Gaucho, and this is all it has. It's got basically a bushing. So that rides around and spins. This is obviously, oh, got it stuck. So obviously they aren't made for each other, but this is. And I would suggest lubricating that with some like graphite, something that's a dry lube, not, not WD-40 or anything like that. But that is the one upgrade, guys. So this must have been having issues. If this would wear out, it would make that wobble. So there's the, there's the, the surprise that I did not expect to see. So that's basically it, guys. That's the main differences of the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 Super Gaucho made by Peg Perigo. Or some people say Peg Perigo. Um, but if you guys are looking for these, don't assume that the Gen 2 is just as good. I'm going to have to say it's, it's only 75% the quality or the features of the Gen 1. So if you're looking out there, guys, if you, if, if you can find a Gen 1, that's basically the moral of the story. But this Gen 2 is still an amazing machine. It's far better than any Power Wheels, Jeep Wrangler, or Jeep Hurricane out there. So again, guys, if you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and look for the next video where we're actually going to hopefully start working on our Gen 1 rebuild. Stay tuned.